Let's put GRT to the test. For example, I'm going to put in my 340 Weatherby, and some of the things I'm going to do is put in my personal water grain capacity for my cases, the length that I'm going to load it at, 3.6950, the barrel length, which mine is 26 inches. I'm putting in a 225 grain Barnes TTSX. The powder I'm using is IMR7828. I'm going to use 85 grains. And according to GRT, I am a little over pressure at 65,566 PSI. Muzzle velocity estimated 3,058 feet per second. Let's see if it's actually accurate. I like the muzzles. Yours is easier to see. 85 grains. Let's just okay. see what the velocities yeah. are. Welcome back to the channel really excited for this one. I want to talk all about the Gordon's reloading tool application. I started using this because I had noticed with all of my Weatherby cartridges and my Weatherby rifles that I was hitting pressure and getting a lot faster velocities than all of the books. For example, when I decided to load up the 175 grain LRX with Reloader 22, and reloader 22. So I started at 81 and a half and went up to 83. And when I shot all the way up to 83 grains, I got way faster velocities. Let me show you. Thirty-three ninety-four. Holy crap. Robin Hood. So according to Barnes, I'm probably about 250 feet per second faster than what the load data is supposed to be. Now, bear in mind, they're using a 24-inch barrel, but that extra two inches isn't going to add 250 plus feet per second. Now, I've also noticed in my 340 Weatherby that it is going a lot faster than the books as well. Let me show you the 340 Weatherby Barnes data with the 225 grain DTSX. Okay, we are looking at IMR 7828. As I showed in the beginning, I was using 85 grains. And the starting load is 86 grains at 2,789 feet per second. Now, if I had blindly just followed the Barnes low data and said, hey, let's see how fast we can push this to 91 grains, it could be extremely bad. Let me show you with the GRT numbers. So let's change the number to 91. Well, first off, let's let's start with 86 grains, the starting load, which I believe said it was going to get like high 2,700 feet per second. This says almost 3,100 feet per second with 68,000 PSI. Then we go up to the max load in Barnes, and we are at catastrophic pressure and insane velocity. Check this out, 3,307 feet per second. 86,000 PSI. Yeah, so this Barnes data is absolute crap. So let's take a look, a little intro into Gordon's reloading tool. Number one, and this is pretty awesome, this is free to download. You don't have to pay for anything. And some of the great things about this is it has just about every single cartridge you could think of. There are a few downsides. We'll talk about that later in the video. It does not have every cartridge. Another nice thing is it has just about every single powder that you could reload for. And of course, just about every single bullet. Again, it doesn't have everything, but it's very close. How does this really work? Well, as you see here, you pick the cartridge. You need to know your water grain capacity, what case length you're doing things at, and then your coal, so your cartridge overall length, where you're gonna seat it to, to the tip of the bullet. And of course, the barrel length, you put in all of the bullet information, then you put in the powder information. So let's say I should probably start at 83 grains with this 340 Weatherby, and it's gonna give me an estimate of loss 2978 feet per second with 59,000 almost 60,000 PSI. And at least with my gun, this is just about dead on. And that's what's really awesome. 
with my Weatherby cartridges, they are almost all dead on with my Weatherby cartridges, while the books are completely off. Now, there are so many features in GRT, and I'm not going to be able to cover them all. I've recently just started using this because I want to make sure that I am shooting safe pressures. So one of the cool things you can do is you can find information and pressure and where you should really start with a powder that might not be in a reloading book. So let me show you, for example, we're going to ch change this to the Nosler 250 grain Acubon for my 340 Weatherby. What I wanted to show you is that I'm going to use a powder that is very available, that has a very similar burn rate, IMR7828 SSC, that I really want to use because I really want to start shooting my 340 Weatherby more. I want to develop more loads with it. But the classic powders like IMR7828 SSC is just about impossible to find. GRT, it looks like about 80 grains well, probably about 79 and a half is the max if I don't want to go over pressure. And it looks like my top velocity I'm going to be getting with this powder in my cartridge, and it's really going to be uh, low 2,900 feet per second. One of the other really cool things about GRT is it tells you how much percentage of that propellant is burned you can really customize and find what specific powder is best for your rifle. That is really useful so you're getting the most out of what you're using. N570 is a wonderful powder, but it is not a good powder for certain cartridges or with really light bullets. You are just not going to burn all the powder. Same thing goes with a lot of other just really slow burning powders is you're gonna want an overbore cartridge, likely a Magnum with a heavy bullet to get that 100% burn rate. Now what happens when GRTs just isn't correct? It's been great for my Weatherby cartridges, but I've seen the data where it's a little skewed. And unfortunately that happens with some rifles. Every gun chamber is going to be different. GRT just can't get it right every single time. So why use GRT if it's extremely off? For example, my friend's seven millimeter Remington Magnum, we recently shot the 195 grain burger using N570. We shot 71 grains. According to GRT, he's only gonna get 2,775 feet per second. Here's what the actual velocity was with 71 grains. 2903. 2903. Nothing. So as you can see, it was off by more than 100 feet per second. It was about off by 125 feet per second. So that's not really helpful, but what GRT is good for where you could really start a load. That's what it'd be really good for. However, there is one feature where you go up to optimal barrel time. Okay, so once we get into up barrel time, I can actually change the velocity, the actual, which was 2903 feet per second. And then if I hit compute, it will actually give me an accurate reading of pressure. So we are at 59,000 PSI. So I know that I am still under pressure and we are good to go with this load. All right, so let's go over, obviously GRT is absolutely awesome and I'd highly recommend it for every single reloader. But now I wanna talk about what it doesn't do very well. Well, for one, any really new cartridge, 6.8 Western, 28 Nosler, 6.5 300 Weatherby, seven millimeter PRC, they're not in the database. Now, you can personally put it in the database that takes quite a long time because you've got to get all of these numbers, which you can do. Or you can probably go to a GRT Discord and upload what other people have put in. For example, it'd be really nice to be able to do 7PRC correctly. And as I briefly mentioned, you're not going to have every single bullet 
there are no hammer bullets in here. I think there's actually one 257, but uh, all the others, I'm kind of have to guess. I use say like a Barnes bullet that's kind of close to the same weight and just safely work up from there. So yeah, unfortunately it doesn't have every single bullet. And then lastly, the other downside is it does not have every single powder. Some of the ones that I've noticed that are missing is for example, for Alliant, Reloader 25 is not in there. There's a couple Hodgdon powders that are missing and maybe a couple of IMR. And there's a lot of Ramshot powders that are missing because some of them are newer. There's no LRT, there's obviously no Grand. It is an absolutely incredible tool to use and it gives me the peace of mind that I'm staying under pressure and it's just extremely helpful and I'd absolutely recommend it for every reloader.